Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with my coloring book. All right, I have been working for over six months drawing every single one of the designs in this coloring book and I want to share it with you guys. It's through Amazon, it's physical coloring books for just $6.99 on Amazon. So cool. Check it out. The link is down below for where to buy this coloring book. I have a lot of friends on Facebook and such that have already gone and bought their copies. And so they're going to be getting them soon. I want to have a quick little run through of the coloring book. If you're interested in beautiful hand-drawn designs, take a look at this because it's so relaxing to just sit down and start coloring. Now I know some people say, ah, coloring is not so relaxing because it's so difficult and it's really hard to choose. I don't know what's going to work in the coloring book. I have you covered here because inside this coloring book, first we have our, you know, title page and all of that. Then there's this lovely little place where you can put your name and the date you started this coloring book. Then I have a nice page here where you can test your supplies. We're going to come back and test a few different supplies and see what works on this paper. So it's being published when you order, they print a copy of the book. So the paper here in the United States, at least, is a little thin. It's 60 pounds. So what I did is I did not put any coloring pages on the back side. So you don't have to worry about possibly messing up another page. I also say for you to slip another piece of paper between pages so when you're testing your colors or when you're coloring, you're not going to mess up the pages behind. We're going to see how these different materials work with it in just a second. But a quick flip through. There are over four dozen designs in this coloring book, and I hand drew every single one of them. So we have easy, simple designs that get a little more involved. And then they go back to being easy and maybe easy and a little more involved. You have so many varieties. Now it's not all roses, but it is all floral inspired. So we have water flowers and lily of the valley. I even threw in hibiscus and a hummingbird. Now, Hummingbirds may not hang around hibiscus, but it just looked really cute with this. So, you know, it's, it's art and you can make it what you want. This is like a rose briar. So it looks more involved, but really it's leaves and roses. You can do it. Here's one that's a little more mandala-y. Mandala-y? Is that a word? So I'm not going to go through every single picture, but... I did want to show you that there are some much more involved and detailed ones that you'll have opportunities to work with. See, a little more detail here. This one is probably the most detailed one in the book. And very sharp colored pencils is what I would recommend for this one. This one's a, almost the same detail, but not quite. Still, sharp colored pencils gets you into those fine details. There we go. And then we go back to some easy stuff. So you have a combination of really detailed, harder to color, take your time on them, to some that are a lot more open and easier to color in. I hope that this gives you a nice little taste of what's in this coloring book. So thank you for checking that part out. Now let's get on to checking out how some of these different materials work with it. I think I want to start off with just grabbing this bundle of colored pencils. There we go. Here's some 
Okay, so these are the Prismacolor Very Thins. They're a little bit harder type of pencil. So let's try a couple of those. Let's go with, oh, maybe a green and a red. This page has a lot of area for you to test your colors. Even though colored pencil doesn't go through, if you're working with hard leads, they might indent the pages underneath. I just have a piece of cardstock paper here, and I'm just going to slip that in. Now this coloring book is eight and a half by eight and a half, so you can slip any size paper in here and it will protect it. If I work with some wet supplies, I want to make sure that they don't bleed through onto the next page. But remember what I said, they're only printed on one side. So I am going to go with, let's see, this is the very thin. So that's laying on here. I am not being really super careful. You know, and I'm standing up at my table, so it's a little bit, a little bit different to, to color. And I'm going quickly because I want to get through a whole bunch of different, different materials, different supplies, different options. We want options. Let's see. Let's grab. We'll grab a purple. And you notice, I'm trying several different ones in this box. You don't have to do just one color in a box. You can try a few different ones. But the very thin seems to lay down really nicely on here. The nice thing about it is that they hold a really sharp point. All right, very thin seems to work really well. I want to try some gel pens because you know, gel pens are something that a lot of people like to use in their coloring books. So let's see, maybe we'll try and do something kind of similar. This paper is a little bit thicker than your regular, you know, copy paper. So that's nice. These are kind of old pens, so we'll see how they work. But yeah, they're, they're going on this paper nicely. Gel pens don't, um, don't soak in. See. I'm just grabbing some different, uh, well, trying to, I guess, do the similar colors in a similar way. There, and we need a dark green. Let's grab a dark green. Maybe. No, that's not really a dark green, but. All right, so these pens have not been used very much. They're gonna get used a lot more now, I think, though. I like them. I might have to buy a new set, though, because now, I'm working on this. The pen is a little dry, so I'm kind of really pressing. So we'll see how that, how that worked. So, you kind of see a little bit of indentation going on. Right here. It indented a little bit, but not too bad. Definitely glad that I put the paper behind. Gel pens work. Very thin Prismacolors work. Crayola markers. A lot of people have Crayola markers. It's a nice thing to be able to use to color with. So let's see. We want an orange. This is more of an more of a brown, isn't it? That's the thing with Crayola markers. They don't really give you the names of the colors. Super tips. So they have a nice uh, pointy tip on them. 
and let's go with violet. and blue. Now these are much wetter. So we'll see if these bleed through. And green. And I'm going to really saturate that green, I guess. There we go. All right, so let's take a look. Did that bleed through? Indeed. Good thing that we have the sheet here because Crayola markers bleed through. Now I've got some Arteza colored pencil here. I know it's another colored pencil, but you know what? Sometimes you want to try different things. So let's see, we're going with kind of a purpley tone. Ooh. Well, that's nice. The Arteza colored pencils are a smoother, thicker core. So that's really nice. So this paper seems to have enough tooth. It has an ever so slight texture to it. It's not a super smooth paper, but it's not really rough either. All right, so I'm coloring in a wider area here. And then a green. Just a green. And you see how you can test a whole bunch of different things. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and just grab a pen and say Prisma. very thin. And this was gel pens. And this was Crayola. And this is Arteza Expert color pencils. So I have a water brush here. I have the uh, Derwent Ink Tents. Let's see what that does. Now, some people use the Derwent Ink Tents just as a straight colored pencil without activating it with water. Oh, it colors down nicely. Nice and smooth. And then a purple tone. And a green. Yeah, that goes down really nicely. Now, you will not get as fine a detail with these pencils because they are a thicker core something to keep in mind. Now we're going to get it wet and then see what happens. Ooh, that's pretty. Looks like marker when you're all done. Okay, we'll see what that looks like when it's dry. But that's a Derwent ink tents. Look at that, we've already gone through five different materials and now we're going to flip this up and take a quick look and see what's going on. 
So yes, the once you got it wet, it bled through. But it didn't mark the paper behind. So let's see, what other things can I, well, I guess I could try just some of these little fan palette type watercolor. So that one and then purple. It's probably not the best purple. Let's see if I can get a different purple. Oh, that's better. And blue and dark green. So we'll grab the green. Now, this is just using it as straight color. I would not layer any colors. I would not try mixing the colors on this paper. But as a test to see if you can put color on this paper it's kind of like it's like using copy paper so if you can watercolor on copy machine paper you could watercolor on this right here it did it it started to come through the paper a little bit wow Okay, so I'm just digging through and finding fun things to try on this paper now. I have a set of mild liners from Zebra Pens, brush lettering set, and mild liners. So the mild liners are like highlighters, kind of, but they're soft. So let's, let's see what that does. So you've got the orange. The purple. I guess this would be kind of the bluey, the blue tone. Yeah, that's the blue tone. It's a little more green, but you know, it's okay. We're really just sampling these colors out and we'll see what happens. Those bleed through. So we're seeing that the colors are bleeding through, but they're not totally destroying the paper. But I'm also not scribbling back and forth and back and forth. You could, you could definitely tear a hole through the paper if you're not being careful. But here's the brush pens. Oh, this is the, the, the hard tip type brush pen. I've never used these. That's a good test on here though, because they're really a nice, fine, fine point. So these would get in and get some really nice details. So this is the blue. I'm pushing down. I'm giving it a little extra oomph on the pen. Wow, that green is dark. I've not used these pens yet. That's why they were sealed shut still. I hadn't used them yet. And then the purple. I like these pens though. The colors are pretty. There we go. All right, so this is the brush pen, zebra brush pen. And this is the zebra mild liner. All right, we're going to flip it over and take a look. Ooh, yep. So again, Things are bleeding through a little bit. That's okay. It's laying down nicely on here. Let's see. If 
I go back, catch some of those little spots. It's looking pretty though. So I've got this nice big container of crayons. Big box of crayons right here. Now crayons are nice. They are so many colors. The good crayons, when you get Crayola crayons, they have uh, quite a bit of pigment to their wax ratio. So you get some nice colors, deeper tones. I used to do a ton of coloring just with crayons when I was a kid. So let's see. All right, so we're gonna try it with the Crayola crayons. And as you would expect, it's going on nicely on this paper. Let's see how solid a color we, ooh. That's nice, yeah. Okay, so orange, green, See if I can get that one to have, to fill in the tooth. See, that's what you're doing is you're filling in the tooth of the paper with the crayon. And because it's a fairly shallow tooth to this paper, it fills really quickly, which is one of the reasons why you're not going to be doing a lot of blending and layering. You can put colors next to each other and have them kind of overlay. And you can use this page to practice those things too. Look at that, Crayola. And as we would expect that the Crayola, one of the best things that you can put on here, the Arteza Expert colored pencils were nice. I would imagine the uh, Prismacolor colored pencils, the standard ones would work really well. Soft colored pencils and even the very thins worked really well. If you're interested in coloring along with me, pick up your own copy of the coloring book. This is going to be the free coloring sheet that you will be able to download as a sample from my brand new Fun Floral Mandalas coloring book. I hope you enjoyed this. Click below for all the information. I will list the materials that I used in the coloring samples and the way to get this coloring book from Amazon. Thank you guys. Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.